What's up everybody? Staying here from Rocky Creek. Hope everybody's doing well. So today we need to get the chicks out of the incubator and put into the brooder. We need to check on mama hen and her babies. And we're gonna talk about how you can get yourself some Rocky Creek swag hats through our giveaway. So hang tight, let's get some work done, and then let's talk about these hats. Let's go. Y'all, yeah, so first things first is we need to go ahead and get our brooder set up so we have a smooth transition from the incubator into the brooder. That's one big thing with chicks, whether you're getting them from the store, raise them on your own, whatever, have your stuff in place before you're ready to move them. Um, it's so much easier that way. So those that have followed us before, I always use one of these totes. Um, and then this one in particular is my smaller one. With only how many chicks we have, this should be fine. Has two roosting bars built in, so we should be ready to go. Now I cleaned that thing out at the end of last time, but just to kind of freshen it up a little bit, I lightly cleaned it up, but then I also use this product right here. I don't know if this stuff's very effective at disinfecting a brooder. I have just always done it, um, but it's poultry protector, it's non-toxic, um, and technically you can use this, you can spray the actual birds or whatever, but I just use it, I've always used it in my, uh, my brooders. And I guess, I don't know how many chicks I've raised in, the, in my years. If I count the meat birds that I've raised, you know, we're probably close to 50 chicks at this point that we've raised. And I can only think of three chicks that I've ever lost. Two were copper morans that we got from the store and, and all the other chicks survived except for only those two. And they were the only two of that particular breed I got. So I don't think it was anything on our end. I think it was just a bad batch. And then I had one that had my very first batch my dog got a hold of. But as to an actual illness, I don't think we've ever lost a chick. So until the system doesn't work, I'm gonna stay the path. So let's get this brooder in here and let's get it set up. All right, let's get this. Let's put this in the garage. Y'all don't judge me on my garage. I know it's a complete mess. I don't have, I don't have an outdoor building, so. This becomes my outdoor building. One day my wife might be able to park a car in here. Maybe not. So what I do is I put it here and then I actually hang my heat lamp. My garage door doesn't come that far on the track and I actually always hang it from there. And then I can adjust my height pretty good. So I need to get my extension cord ran, test my heat lamp, make sure it's good. Let's get our bedding put in here. Food and water, ready to rock and roll. So then all I do is I just adjust it to where their roosting bars would be underneath the heat lamp. Now when they're really small, they'll just kind of lay below the bars. They're up high enough where it doesn't affect them. But then after about two weeks, they'll start jumping on those naturally. And then all I do is I just keep kind of raising that up that way. Now if I start to worry that this might slip or so, um, sometimes I just take a little clamp and I just clamp gently the cord up there with the rail and that holds it just fine. Like I said, we've done this about four times and each time it's worked out really well. So all I need to do now, get the bedding put in here, um, then we'll get to food and water and then we'll be ready to move these babies in here. So my normal chick feeder is occupied by the, uh, the other baby chicks. It's the first time I got two batches going in one place. So I just went to the closest store I had and this was the only chick feeder they had, which I'm not really a big fan of, but it'll do for right now until I can get another one of the kinds that we usually use. All right, so we're gonna make sure we get them some good fresh water. Now, any new chicks I get, I always use apple cider vinegar, but the big thing is make sure that it has the mother with it. And usually you can tell because there'll be some like floating stuff down in the bottom. Um, but I just put a tiny bit in their water and I mostly do this when they're chicks. When they get older, I'll do it about once a month or so, but I don't do it as often. But when they're chicks, I just do a little dab and it just helps with their, their immune system.
All right, guys, like I said, this is the setup we've always used. So got my heat lamp there over top of the roosting bars, which they're not going to use for probably a couple weeks. Got our food, got our water. The only thing I'm missing is usually I have a board I put underneath to feed in the water. Um, I also have a mesh screen thing that I put it on. But for the first week or so, you know, we just make do the way it is so it's easier for them to access. So we're going to go ahead and get these guys loaded up in a box and get them put in here. And this will be their new place to hang out until they're ready to go out to the coop with the rest of the chickens. <laughs> Come on, buddy. All right, so we're gonna get these chicks out the incubator, show you which ones we got, um, and then we're gonna get them into the brooder. So they've been in here now for about, this is close to 36 hours maybe, if I had to guess, but they're pecking at all the other eggs in here pretty bad. Um, one of the eggs had just started peeping through, and I mean, they're just going to town on it because there's such a big difference between when they started hatching. So the ones that are in here right now are dried off, so we're gonna go ahead and get them out and get them relocated, and then we'll let the other ones go for about another 24 hours, see what we end up with. But right now, I think there's seven. So one of the cool things about Crested Cream Leg Bars is that the gentleman was telling me that you can actually tell the difference between the boys and girls from the time that they're born. The girls are like a darker color. They remind me of like what an Easter egg would look like, and then the boys are a lighter color. So I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. Chloe's ready. So you can maybe tell this darker one in this hand should be a girl and this lighter color in this hand should be a boy. So that's what's kind of neat about these, these right here. So you can look at them, you can really tell them inside of here they're perfect. These four, I would believe to be girls because of how much darker they are. And then these, and then two, then these two can most likely be boys because of how much lighter they are. And if you look really close, sometimes they'll have like this little light spot on their head. And they said sometimes that can help to, to indicate it as well, but that's not tried and true. But typically, you know, the, the girls are a lot uh, darker and the boys are a lot lighter colored. Now, I just took a big peek. I was going to leave them in here until tonight, but there was one egg that had peeped. And um, when I just came in a little bit ago, I could see all the chickens. They saw that little hole. I mean, they're just, they're just pecking at it like crazy. So I don't know if that's going to hurt whatever chick was in there. So that's why I want to go ahead and get them out now. I know it says you shouldn't open up the incubator, but I was a little concerned about that. So I put some more moisture in to keep the humidity up. We're gonna get them in the brooder and then we'll just manage. But it looks like maybe that last egg is the last one that's gonna do something. The rest of them, I'm pretty sure, are just gonna be no-goes. Uh, but we'll see what happens with that one. But we're not gonna keep these guys out long. We're gonna get them under the heat lamp and get them settled into their new home. All right, we've got the brooder all set up. We're gonna start dipping some beaks and get these guys settled in here. Got a lot more room in here. You're gonna fire it up, little fella. There we go guys, two, four, six of them. Six out of 11 hatched so far, so maybe, hopefully we'll get that seventh one. But this is gonna be their new home. We're gonna let them get settled in, let them get warm under the heat lamp, and we'll keep y'all updated as far as how they do. What are you thinking more babies on the farm? You don't care, because you know you're always gonna be number one, right, Chloe Dollar? Yeah, because we got you four stay. You're the best animal we got. All right, so we got all those little babies settled down in the brooder now. 
So let's take you down here to the coop though and show you how mama and her baby chicks are doing. How do you think they are? You haven't seen them out in, in the coop yet, have you? Uh, you see them? They are so cute. I love them. There she is, guys. Mama with her babies. I can't see the babies. I gotta come over here. Aww. So we got one girl out here? There's two girls and one boy. Looks like there's two girls. No, the dark ones are the girls. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the lighter color is the boys. Mm -hmm. So there's two girls and one boy. So, so to give y'all a recap on how, how we're doing this is I went ahead and I took the dog crate, lined it with chicken wire so the baby chicks wouldn't get out or something couldn't get to them. Um, and mama's been in there and we put her original nest in there with them. I left them locked in there for a little more than 24 hours, maybe closer to 36 hours um, with her and the babies and the food and water. Well, this morning, mama was like just pacing back and forth wanting out of there so that was kind of like a clear indication that she's ready to leave the nest um so i opened the door and as soon as i did she came out along with a few of the babies i kind of let them hang out and do their thing for about an hour before i let all the rest of the chickens out and i wanted to kind of hang out too and watch and make sure she was gonna defend the babies like like she should and i'm gonna tell you what she's gonna protect them babies she, she's been jacking up the rest of these chickens all day. Um, so as long as she, she can see what's going on with her chicks, I think she's going to defend them fine because um, she's, she's probably, every chicken at some point has tried to come see the chicks or see what's going on, and she, she has defended them tooth and nail. So we're going to go ahead and keep this, keep this going this way, and we're going to try to try it out and see if she can raise them in here amongst the flock naturally and see if, how that works. Yes, it's a chance we're going to take. And I understand that, that you know, something bad very well could happen, but I really want to try to do this the best way that, that nature has designed it. You know, I ended up leaving her in the nesting box and didn't really um, intervene. When I did try to intervene, it was going terribly. When I went back to just let Mother Nature do its thing, it worked best. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this go the way it is, the ones that she naturally hatched and see if she can naturally raise them and we go from there. So it has been really neat though to watch them just kind of follow mom and learn from mom, it's worked out really well. So another thing that I found very cool is that actually when I, I can reach into her, her crate and, and I can like grab her water and the food and mess with the chicks and she really, she'll fluff up at me and make some noises, but she never really comes after me. Um, so that's been pretty nice where versus if any of the other chickens come near her, then that's when she gets really fired up. Um, seems like if they get about within a foot to two feet of the chicks, then she goes after them and clears them out. Um, so it's kind of neat that she's able to distinguish between them and myself, which is making things a little bit easier too. So guys, I talk about when you live on a homestead, you gotta mix fun and play, especially when you have kids. And you know, it's been a, it's been a busy week, guys. We, you know, we, me and my wife work full time. We got a newborn. We also got a six year old. And this week, you know, we had eggs hatching under the mama hen. We had eggs in the incubator. We got the garden full bloom. We processed 24 chickens. Now it's time to go poolside and hang out. What do you think? Yeah. So while we're there, I'll talk about the hat giveaway. So let's get over there and let's have some fun. I think it was good.
It's like 94 degrees today. The little man can't be in the pool. He just got to stay in here and stay cool. You say hi, little man? No, just grunt. This right here is what they call a cicada killer, and they're always here a whole lot every summer. They don't really harm us at all. I mean, if you step on it, it'll get you, but for the most part, they ignore you. It's pretty awesome to see them when they catch one. Let me see if they can get one. They've been catching them all day. I don't know if y'all can see that right there. That one just caught one. So they grab it, their whole body grabs it, and they sting it, and then they eat it. Neat to see, like they just they just snatch them up and they suck them down into the ground where they eat them. Because apparently the cicada killers live in the ground. I first discovered these things a couple years ago and it freaked me out. Then I realized that they're pretty harmless to us. But it's pretty neat to watch them do what they do. Alright guys, so I'm going to go ahead real quick and explain to you how we're going to do our hat giveaway. As I've said in previous videos, we were going to give away two of these summer edition hats. Previously, we only gave away one hat of our original ones, but this time we're going to give away two because we've had an increase in subscribers. And, and you know, I buy these on my own and most I can do right now is provide two of them. But hopefully as we continue to grow, um, we can try to do more of these in the future for more people. But this is just a way to give our thanks back to you for your support. So it's very simple on how you can have an opportunity to maybe get selected for one of these hats. So all you need to do is you need to hit that like button on this video, place a comment in the comment box, and be a subscriber to our channel. Once you've done those three things, here in two weeks from now, we're going to go ahead and do a drawing to see who's going to ultimately get it. The drawing will be done completely random. Um, we'll use a program just as we did before that will go ahead and select those people. Once you get selected, you'll just need to get in touch with us to provide us proper mailing information, and we'll get those things sent out to you ASAP. So hopefully that makes sense to you. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comment link below, or you can always email us as well, um, which the link to that's on our website or down in the description box below. So guys, it's just a way to say thank you, but now we're gonna get to having some more fun here in the pool, and we'll see y'all here real soon on the next video. Y'all be good.